What is going on everyone and welcome back to another ANSYS tutorial. Today I will be showing you guys how to do the moving heat source simulation in ANSYS Workbench. This uses an extension, an ANSYS extension that can be found on the ANSYS store. This makes the setup of the simulation much, much easier and does not require any coding to do the simulation. So to start, we're going to go to the ANSYS store. So this is the ANSYS store catalog. Uh, you can find this at catalog.ansys.com. And here they have a whole bunch of extensions uh, that can be used and downloaded. Some of them are free. Uh, as you can see, the moving heat source one is free. Some of them do cost money. Uh, but for the simulation that we're setting up today, we are interested in doing the moving heat source. So we are going to download the moving heat source extension. Now, I already have it downloaded. So I'm going to go back to the ANSYS workbench. And I'm going to show you how to uh, add it as a plugin. Now that we have the he moving heat source extension downloaded, we can go back to our ANSYS workbench and now we need to install it as an extension of ANSYS. So in order to do that, we have to go to the ACT startup page up here, click on that, and it'll open up a new tab from your project, just like the uh, engineering materials does. So the we go to the ACT startup page and we go to manage extensions. And we're going to press on the plus sign here to install a new extension. Now, what you're looking for in the uh, file that you downloaded is the WBEX file in that folder. So I have it saved over here in moving heat source and it's in the bin folder. And as you, as you can see here, the moving heat .wbex file. So you open that and you can see here that now you have an extension here that's called moving heat. And in order to uh, install it and make sure that it's active uh, when we do our simulation, you need to press on it. And now it's available. It turns green, so it's available to use uh, during the simulation that we are about to do. So now we're going to go back to the project tab. And we're going to uh, drag the steady state thermal uh, module into the project schematic. We're going to rename the project as moving heat. So the next step before we continue this simulation is to ensure that our material that we are going to use has the uh, correct material properties in order to perform the simulation and get the right results. So we're going to double click on engineering data here and we're going to open up the engineering data tab. Now we're going to use the, the default structural steel uh, material because as we can see here that it does have the mechanical property that we want, the thermal conductivity. So that is all good. So we can get rid of this tab and we're going to go back to our project and now open up geometry and wait for space claim to open. Now with space claim open, we're going to go ahead and build the geometry for our simulation. It's going to be a pretty simple geometry. It's going to be a 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter steel sheet with uh, a quarter inch thickness or 3.35 millimeters. So we're going to head and start building that. And one thing to note is that this geometry is going to be built in a pretty peculiar way. Uh, we're going to want to split the geometry in two because this is going to be important for later on when we uh, determine the path of the moving heat source uh, when we go over to the mechanical sides of setting up the simulation. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and set up this model and then I'll be back in just a second. Hey everyone and welcome back. So now as you can see here, this is my final geometry that I'm going to import into Mechanical uh, in order to do the rest of the simulation and the simulation setup. Uh, as you can see, there is a line going between the two. There are two bodies to make up the two halves of the 300 uh, millimeter sheet. Uh, this is because when we go into and set up the moving heat source, we're going to want to specify a path of which along it follows. So so for that path, we're going to choose this center line here and the heat, the moving heat source is going to follow a straight line right across the middle of this plate. So that's why we break it up into two bodies. But uh, as far as the calculations or the results go, it's going to interpret uh, these two bodies as one. So now we're going to exit out of space claim and go back into our ANSYS workbench. And now we can see we have a check mark beside geometry, so that's good. And so we're going to open up the model and we're going to launch mechanical as we see down here, it says starting mechanical. So I'll see you guys in a second. 
Now with Mechanical open, it is time to set up our simulation. So first things first is that we're going to mesh our geometry. So we're going to go right here, right click on mesh and press generate mesh. And we're going to wait for the mesh to generate. As we can see, the mesh is quite coarse. So in order to refine it a little bit, we are going to go ahead and add a sizing to the mesh. In order to do that, we're going to right click on mesh go to insert, go to sizing. And as we can see here, it's asking us to select a geometry. So we're going to press on the body selector and we're gonna select both bodies by holding control, apply them to the geometry, and we're going to pick a sizing for our geometry. After the sizing is picked, we're going to go back to mesh and press update and the geometry is going to remesh based on the conditions that we gave it. As we can see, now the mesh is a lot more refined than it used to be. The next step to make the simulation is to uh, specify the boundary conditions. Now, uh, we're more focused on doing the moving heat source simulation, so we don't have uh, particular boundary conditions to apply to each side. So for the purpose of this uh, simulation, we're just gonna apply a simple uh, convection uh, boundary condition to each of the sides of this model here. So in order to do that, we're going to right click on steady state thermal. We're gonna go insert and press on convection. So now we're going to apply all the faces by pressing on the face selector tool. We're going to apply all the faces of this geometry to that boundary condition. And I believe that's all of them selected, so that's good. So we're gonna press apply and we're gonna give it a film coefficient of 100. It's just an arbitrary number uh, so that the uh, simulation has a boundary condition for all of the faces here. Again, we don't have a particular boundary condition that we're applying. So we're just applying an arbitrary boundary condition for the purpose of the simulation. Now with our boundary conditions put into place, we're going to want to implement the next step of this model, which is the moving heat source. So in order to do that, we're going to right click on steady state thermal like we did before, go to insert and press on moving heat flux. And as we can see here, there's a whole bunch of things that we need to specify and parameters that we can change in order to control uh, the moving heat source. So the first things first is we need to define the geometry, the path, and the starting point of our moving heat source. So the geometry is the uh, face on which the heat source is going to be on. So we're going to click on the face selector tool and we're going to select the two top faces of our model here and press apply. As for the path, like I mentioned before, when we were building our geometry, uh, we're going to choose the center path. So we're gonna choose on the line function here and we're gonna choose the center path here that is created by the boundary of the two bodies. And that is the wrong one. We're gonna to wanna to choose the top one. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing the, the path along which you've chosen your geometry. So if you wanna choose the bottom path here, you wanna make sure that your geometry is these bottom two faces. So I've chosen the top path here. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And we're gonna choose the point selector for the starting point. And we're going to choose the point on the edge here. And this is where the uh, heat source is going to start. So we're going to press apply there. Now that our geometries are all scoped out, we're going to want to change the different uh, parameters in order to control our heat source. So the first few are the index, the first patch, and the last patch. So this refers to uh, which heat source we're talking about. Since we only have one heat source, uh, we're going to keep this as an index of one, and we're going to change last patch to yes. So what this means is that we have one, the first heat source that we're talking about, it is the first occurrence of it, and it's going to be the last occurrence of it. Say we had two heat sources. Well, your first one would have an index of one. Uh, of one. Your first patch, yes, it would be yes, since it is the first occurrence of it. And your last patch would be no, because we're about to have an occurrence of a second heat source. And then we would move on to the second heat source. Your second heat source would have an index of two, First patch would be no, because we already had a, a heat source occur before it, and your last patch would be set to yes, because it will be the last occurrence of it. So this is what the three of these definitions mean. So since, again, since we have one heat source, we're going to index the index it at one, it's going to be the first occurrence of it, and it's going to be the last occurrence that's going to happen.
The next thing that we're going to want to define for our moving heat source is the velocity at which it's moving at, the radius of the beam, the intensity of the beam, and the start and end time of the beam. So we're going to keep the velocity and radius as is. We're going to uh, change the power intensity and make it a little less powerful. And now we're going to define the end time. Now we want to make sure that the uh, time it takes the beam to go across the plate is not longer than what we are defining here. So say, so right now, since it is moving at uh, 0 0.005 meters per second, and we have a 300 millimeter long plate, it will take 60 seconds for it to uh, go from start to finish. But say we were to define this as 0 to 80, 0 to 80 seconds. Well, therefore, we would be scoping the moving heat source to run off the end of the plate here. And that's going to give us an error if we try to run the simulation. So you want to make sure that the time, the start time and end time of our beam uh, stays within the boundaries of our geometry that we have set up. So in the case that I'm doing for this simulation, I want the beam to go from this end to the plate to the other end of the plate. So I've defined a velocity of 0 0.005 and from 0 to 60 seconds, it's going to reach from one side to the other side of the plate. So now that all of our parameters of the moving heat source are defined, we can now go to analysis settings and set up a few more things for the simulation. So we're going to click on analysis settings here, and we're going to change the step end time to 60 seconds. This is because we, for our moving heat source, we defined it to last 60 seconds so we want to make sure that our simulation also lasts 60 seconds in length and the next thing now uh, with everything else set up we have check marks everywhere we're going to want to add the uh, results that we want the answers to spit out for us so we're going to right click go to insert go to thermal whoop, go to thermal and put in temperature and insert thermal and do a total heat flux now we can go ahead and solve our simulation. So we'll go right here and click on solve. And I will be back here in a second. Hey guys, and welcome back. The simulation has compiled completely with good information. We can see here that it has green check marks beside the results that we want to get. So we can go ahead and go check those out. So we'll press on temperature here and we can run the simulation or the animation, I should say. Now we can see here that we have a moving heat source going across the plate. We can see that the maximum temperature is about 34 degrees at the center of the beam as it goes across the center of the plate. And we can see that the rest of the plate has an ambient temperature of around 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. The next thing we can check out is the total heat flux. And we can run this animation here as well. And we can see that all the heat flux that is going into the plate is coming from that beam, which is a very good result. That is what we wanted to do with this moving heat source. This moving heat source was the primary source of heat going into the plate. The rest of it was just convection heat leaving the plate. So it is an expected result that all the heat flux uh, that is being generated is being inputted by this beam that is moving across the plate. So we can see that the results that we got were really good. Congratulations, uh, you guys successfully simulated a moving heat source across a plate. This is the end of the tutorial. I hope it was very helpful. I hope you guys learned something, and I will see you guys all in the next tutorial.